Thank you, Jules, for that uh, introduction. So, everybody, uh, good afternoon uh, for this seminar. So, my topic this afternoon is hibiscus breeding in the Philippines, a thriving sector in the plow industry. So, before I uh, discuss this topic, let me first give you a brief history of ornamental plant breeding in the Philippines. So the first work on breeding of hibiscus in the Philippines was done by Dr. Nemencio B. Mignola, who is a plant breeder in the early 1920s. And the results of the breeding work was published from 1922 to 1931. This was followed by the publication of a book which is entitled A Manual of Plant Breeding in the Tropics by Dr. Mignola in 1926. And the book was published by the Bureau of Printing Manila. So in 1948, ornamental uh, breeding on Musa Inda was initiated by the late Dr. Juscari, Juscoro L. Romani a national scientist for plant breeding in the Philippines. And of course, he was assisted by his wife, uh, Sinaida. In 1979, anterior hybridization was done by Dr. Teresita L. Rosario at the Department of Horticulture at UPLP. And from that work, several varieties of anterior were released. In 1984, the breeding work on Agnonima was done by Dr. Romeo G. Gutierrez. He's actually a surgeon, and currently this work is being revived by himself because it was stopped for a while. And then, of course, another monumental work was done in 1994 by Mr. Raynald D. Pimentel, who all started his business breeding program at IPV. Then, when he left the university in 2002, myself continued his work up to the present. So, hibiscus breeding uh, in the Philippines, and of course, in all other Southeast Asian countries, including Florida, Australia, and of course, in other tropical, in tropical America, has been ongoing. And in the Philippines, the Philippines is actually considered a uh, global hotspot for ornamental for ornamentals including hibiscus and there are an estimated 13,500 plant species of which 8,000 are flowering plants and about 3,200 or 40% are actually endemic in the rest are introduced into the country like for example the Gumomela or hibiscus botanically known as hibiscus Rosa sinensis. Hibiscus rosa sinensis is one of the most widely cultivated flowering plants in the tropics. It is very easy to propagate and not exactly in its requirements for growth and flowering. Hibiscus produces attractive flowers that are short lived, usually one day, but it continuously produces flowers throughout the year, with a pink from May to October. The plant is used as a potted ornamental plant. It is, could be used as a fence. If you still remember in the old days, our mothers used hibiscus as a bleaching platform. And as kids, we used hibiscus for playing bubbles. I don't know if among you uh, play stuff. It could, it's still used as a hedge plant, but many use hibiscus as a landscape material. The current boom in the real estate development in the country and calls for the need for ornamentals, like for example hibiscus. It could be used for greening, like for example for the construction of green roof, for green building, and for green wall. These are projected ideas that could be done with hibiscus and to do it 
we have our ornamental experts here from the Department of Agriculture who could probably tell us on what to do. It could be also used for landscaping and also it is a good material for environmental sustainability which is actually an encouraging sign of bright years for the ornamental industry. So further, the value of ornamental hibiscus for climate change adaptation, such as those that can stand less water and those that are intended for health and wellness, like for example, Roussel, another species of hibiscus called hibiscus sabradipa, are high in, uh, are, that are high antioxidant is well recognized by the industry. The diversity in the hibiscus germplasm could be exploited by plant breeders or for developing novel varieties either for palm plant production or for landscaping purposes. It is so interesting that a change in one character, especially flower color or form, already makes a variety of hibiscus unique. So in hibiscus, this is generally achievable using conventional hybridization and selection followed by propagation, which is the actual methodology that we are following for developing the different viscous hybrids. Regardless of the technique used to develop an ornamental variety of viscous, the attractiveness of color of the flower informs the prime requirement of a good hibiscus variety. So the objectives of the breeding program on hibiscus at the University of the Philippines and those parties are the following. One is to hybridize local cultivars with foreign varieties in order to improve our local hibiscus varieties and strains. Second is to select new hybrids with unique flower colors and form and of course leaf shapes. And third is to characterize registered to the National Seed Industry Council the released varieties and of course distribute that to prospective growers and users. So in our methodology for the hibiscus improvement work, so we initially select good parents. Of course, the parents that we are up to are those that are good combiners, meaning to say they could immediately or easily combine the best characters that are present in both parents. For example, a good variety like that, which is bright yellow petals, could be crossed with a white one to come up with something that is different, especially if we wanted the unique form of the petals. So after hybridization, a hybrid fruit is produced. Maybe to many of us, a hibiscus fruit is not common. But in plant, in hibiscus breeding, one has to recognize the fruit. And that is the fruit of a hibiscus that has been fertilized with another flower. So the fruit develop after a week of after a week of pollination and continues to grow until the seeds become mature to one plant. And that those are the seeds of the pollination that was done. The seeds are similar to okra. By the way, the two are members of the same family. So the hybrid seeds, after it has been collected, after they have been collected, are being sown in a light mixture of sun and soil. And of course, they are allowed to germinate under protected condition. And after a week or so, you can see them germinating in two weeks, two to three weeks, you can see them producing the first true legs. After the seedlings have been grown to about two to three leaves. They are being transferred to individual plastic bags like that for further growth and development until they become about three to four months and they've been planted in bigger pots. So after they have been grown up to a year, they are planted in the hibiscus breeding plants and they are being observed for flower emergence and also for prolificacy and also for good form. And that's the time we start making our selections of the hybrids that are ready for release and propagation. So after two or three years of growing 
the hybrid, that's time to start naming and selecting the best hybrids. And from that work, the first series of hybrids that we released is what we call the Centennial Series. The Centennial Series are composed of 11 <coughs> hybrids that were named after Filipino hero heroines of the 1898 Philippine Revolution. They struggled and worked for the freedom and liberation of the country against three centuries of Spanish colonization and four decades of American rule. The Centennial Series were released in 1998, coinciding with the centennial celebration of the Philippine independence. By the way, the Hibiscus Hybrid series are released in a thematic form. A certain theme is being followed for each series that conforms with the naming of all the Hibiscus Hybrids. The centennial series are composed of the following. So we have here Gabriela. As we all know, Gabriela is the wife of Jeco Silan who becomes the secretary of the Katipuna. And of course, Tandang Sora, the mother of the revolution. It is a white hybrid. And of course, Marcela, one of the makers of the Philippine flag. And of course, Dolai, the mother of Martyr Celsa. So this one, look, Marcela is yellow, Dolai is orange. We have also Oria. <laughs> Nini, she is from Santa Cruz Laguna, the lady who is carrying a ball while fighting against the Spaniards. And of course, we have Naisa, it's a yellow hybrid. And then we have Boria. We have Boria, we have Nasaria, we have Abida, and of course, finally, the whole series was collectively called Centenaria which is signified by a red variety that you can see with cardinal red eye. The second release is what we call the Millennium Series. The Millennium Series are, is composed of seven hybrids who were named after UPLB women scientists who helped advance Philippine agriculture. They were released in the year 2000 to mark the coming of the new millennium. A sister series of the Millennium Series is what we call the Women and Science Series. These are presently composed of three hybrids who were named after outstanding women scientists who were elected to the National Academy of Science and Technology as academicians and national scientists. So this series has the following members. So of course, the first one is I get a light yellow hybrid with maroon eye, and it's called Hibiscus rotisinensis Claire Balthazar, named after the famous entomologist of UPLB, who published two volumes of book on economic entomology. Of course, from UPLB also is Dolores Ramirez, a well-known cytogeneticist okay, and a national scientist. The hybrid has canary yellow with light up eye. Another one is Hibiscus rosa sinensis Helia Castillo. It's a canary yellow with dark red eye. Dr. Castillo is a national scientist for rural development. And of course, the other members of the series are the following. We have Soleta M. Camara Besa, who is a Women in Science, belong to the Women in Science series. He is a National Scientist for Medicine. She is a National Scientist for Medicine. The petals are, the petals are actually all rose in color. And of course, we have Fede Mundo, uh, yellow-orange petals with red eye. Dr. Fedel Mundo is a national scientist for pediatrics. We have Dr. Perla Santos Campo. The flower is orange with dark orange eye. And Dr. Perla Santos Campo is a national scientist for medicine as well. So another one is the Hibiscus rosacinensis Mercedes B. Concepcion, a national scientist for 
demography and population studies. The hybrid has canary yellow with with red eye and veins radiating to the petals. Of course, we have Rhythmus rosa sinensis estrella et alabastro, a white spin variety with white eye, and finally, to complete the series in the Millennium series, for this slide, we have Emerita Bidi Guzman, the one who developed the Makapono coconut. I know you all have tasted Makapono, and the tissue culture of Makapono was perfected by, doc, by the late Dr. Emerita Bidi Guzman of the Department of Horticulture. So, the other members of the Millennium series are Hibiscus Rosa Sinensis of Dolly F. Season. Dr. Season is a rural sociologist who alleviated the standard of living in the rural communities. And of course, we have uh, Helen Balmayor. The hybrid is has orange petals with yellow edging. Dr. Helen Balmayor is considered the mother of the orchid industry in the Philippines who published a two-volume book on Orchidiana Filipina. And to complete the series is a red, is a cardinal red hybrid called Melinia. The next series is what you call the Celebrity Star Series. This member of these hybrids were named after veteran and accomplished actresses in the Philippine entertainment world. They were released in the year 2002 to honor famous actresses in the Philippine cinema. So this, this series are composed of the following. So we have Star for All Seasons. It is a Mao variety which is semi-double and named after the famous Bill Santos. Star for All Seasons. Another one is the Hibiscus Rosa Sinensis Superstar. It has orange petals with speckles of yellow and dark red eye and named after the superstar Nora Nora. The next one is Hibiscus Rosa Sinensis Mega Star. It is a light orange yellow variety with orange petals and named after Mega Star Sharon Coneta. And of course, we have Hibiscus Rosa Sinensis Nova Star. The hybrid is a large white hybrid with dark red eye named after uh, Nova Star Maricel Soriano. And finally, I'm sorry, Nova Star. No, this one is Diamond Star. Sorry for my label. I keep repeating. So this one should be Diamond Star. No, sorry for the label. And that one finally is what you call Hibiscus Rosa Sinensis Nova Star, named after Chris Aquino. It is an orange variety of mixed speckles of yellow. So you may choose your favorite among those months. The next series that we released by the Hibiscus Breeding Program is what you call the Oblation Series. The Oblation Series, there are six hybrids who were named after outstanding UP alumni who have assumed the highest position in the academic, scientific, and professional institutions and organizations where they serve. This series was released from 2006 to 2008 to culminate the celebration of the UP Centenary. So in this series, we have the following. Estrella F. Alabastro that I have shown a while ago. We have Betigo Belmonte. Betigo Belmonte is the first woman publisher in the country, the wife, the, the wife of uh, Mayor Belmonte of Quezon City. It's a color yellow with bright red eye, surrounded by white halo. And of course, we have Belsetti's Concepcion. It is a canary yellow surrounded by light red eye with rays radiating to the petals. And of course, Hibiscus Rosa Sinensis, Nelia T. Gonzalez, a dark orange variety named after 
Mrs. Nelia Gonzalez, who is considered as the president, and uh, who is the president for life of the UPNB Alumni Association. And of course, uh, the Biscos Rosa Senensis Perla Santos de Upapo, I showed this a while ago, it's a bright orange hybrid named after the national scientist Perla Santos de Upapo. And of course, Miscus Rosa Senensis Emerging the Roman, a colony yellow hybrid with red eye surrounded by a uh, uh, brownish yellow and red ray is graduating to the petals. So the six are our six members of the population cities. Actually, we have a poster uh, that is demonstrating uh, the hybrids. The next series is what you call the Women in Public Service series. So these are 11 hybrids named after women who devoted their time and energy to public service. It possess the spirit of volunteerism to meet the needs of others before their home without material or financial rewards. So this will release starting 2009 to the present again to commemorate the UPLB centennial year. And these are the following. We have the Discus Rosa Sinensis, Lilia B. De Lima. It's a bright orange hybrid with dark red eye and chocolate halo surrounding the eye. We have Christy Kenny. The hybrid is bluish with red eye and named after the US Ambassador Christy Kenny who worked for the peace process in Mindanao and restored many murals in the Philippine General Hospital. So of course we have Lauren Ligarda. Lauren Ligarda has two colors. It is orange in the morning that turns yellow in the, in the afternoon like that with orange eye, with, with white eyes surrounded by a pinkish halo. Lauren Ligarda was awarded this hibiscus because of her work on environmental sustainability. So of course we have Marilyn D. Marañon. It is again a yellow hybrid with white eye and gravel edges. Dr. Marilyn Marañon was named the hybrid because of her many public service works, particularly in the province of Negros, to help those people with their palate and also to conserve this, the uh, environment in the province of Negros. She is the wife of the governor of the province. So in the series, we have the famous Rosa Rosal. It is a dark red hybrid. Everything is bright red. The petals, the eye, including the stigma, except the pop, except the anthers, which are yellow. And according to Rosa Rosal, she's requesting that the hybrid be provided with white eye before she died. So Rosa Rosal was awarded the hybrid because of her more than 50 years service to the National Red Cross, and also for improving the facilities in the plant chemistry department of the Philippine National Red Cross. And the next one is Domini M. Toribillas. The hybrid is bright orange with maroon eye. Domini Toribillas was one of the hybrid because of her many works on fighting for freedom during the Marcos era in is with the late president Cory Aquino. And also we have Hibiscus Rosa Sinensis Cynthia A. Villar. It is an orange, bright orange hybrid with dark red eye. Mrs. Cynthia Villar was named the hybrid because of her public service, especially in the upliftment of the lives of the poor and also for environmental care and sustainability in, the, in, the, in their place in Las Piñas and also for her many works on environmental greening. Also in the 
the series for public service, we have Hibiscus rosinensis rosario omontejo. It is an orange hybrid, so uh, with yellow and green and pink eyes. So the hybrid is named after Mrs. Rosario Omontejo, the wife of the Secretary of Science and Technology, uh, Mario Montejo, and she is actually an outstanding counselor of Bulacan who helped advance the lives of many people in the place. The next one is Ibiscus rosacinensis silviarina. The hybrid has narrow rose petals with dark red eye and the pinkish, pinkish rays radiating to the petals. Mrs. Silviarina was awarded the hybrid because of her main public service also in the improve and for community improvement in the province of Laguna. The next one is Hibiscus rosacinensis ponis angeles. The hybrid has ornament orange petals <coughs> with dark red eye surrounded by pinkish halo and pinkish rays that radiates to the petals. Ponis angeles was awarded for her, many, for her many public service works, particularly in her TV program, Kapo Komahalbo, with Orly Mercado. And the last one in the series is Hibiscus <coughs> rosacinensis arlene B. Axelius. It is a nice, or it has nice orange petals with dark red eye surrounded by reddish eye, reddish halo. So, Arlene B. Axelius is actually a UP LB graduate from the College of Arts and Sciences, an outstanding, alum, an, an outstanding alumna, and presently working for environmental sustainability in the city of Santa Rosa. Santa Rosa City, by the way, will be named as the Hibiscus capital of Laguna, and they are presently working on the mass propagation of Arlene B. Axelius for beautification for tourism purposes, including other hybrids that are included in the series, Women in Public Service. The last of our series is what we call the Women in the Art series. So this series will be named after outstanding Filipina artists. And the first one that was released is what we call Hibiscus Rosicinensis Araceli L. Dance. So this one has canary yellow petals with pinkish eyes and rays that radiate to the petals. So this one, uh, Araceli Dance was named with the Hibiscus Hybrids for her brilliant work on painting. And she will be conferred a national artist for painting. And she's known for her work on the Calato series and also for putting up educational program of arts both in school and on the air, particularly on TV. So this one is the last of the series and this will be followed by many more national artists like for example Atang de la Rama and others. Of course we have upcoming hybrids in the pipeline so we're not yet finished with our work. We have upcoming hybrids. This one is a cross between Christigeni, the one that you saw a while ago, cross with Helia Castillo to produce a hybrid with bluish petal surrounded by yellow edging with bright with pastel red eye. This one, this hybrid will be called Hibiscus rosacinensis Saint Bridget. And this one was franchised by the St. Bridget College in Batanga City. St. Bridget College will be celebrating their 100 years anniversary next year. And they are in the process of negotiating with the university to mass produce the hybrids. Okay? And this one will be named after the school, St. Bridget College. And this will fall under the same series. So another hybrid.
another that we have is what we, is a cross of Tahitian Tawi, cross with Glory Pigarda, to produce a hybrid with bluish petals and pinkish edging with pastel pink eye. You see the combination of the colors is, there are already three combinations at the moment. So this one has, was proposed to be named Ateneo de Manila University as a contribution to Ateneo for their is it 100 year celebration as well, I was told. So at the present at the present there are there are no negotiations yet on going for this hybrid. And in the afternoon it is bluish blue petals. Another one is a cross between Lori Vigarda and Tarantella to produce a hybrid with uh, bright pink petals surrounded by yellow edges and rays, pinkish, uh, pinkish rays that radiates to the petals. So all these hybrids are actually useless if they are not used by our consumers and our florists in our backyard users and others. So, in order to maximize the usability of the hybrid, we have industry partnerships on hybrid mass propagation. The first one that we have, when we are still having the Millennium Series and the Centennial Series, including the Celebrita Star Series, is a franchising business with big orchids and ornamentals in Calamba City and other growers in Negros as well as in Cebu. So there is a franchise, the franchising agreement is working in such a way that we provide the mother plants to the uh, nursery owners and based on the gross sales, the university will be paid 7% of the total gross sales of whatever sales they make. Another one is our partnerships with private and public institutions like for example Las Peñas City Government, care of Mrs. Cynthia Villar. They provided project funds for the Gumamena breeding program in order to put up a misting facility that was just inaugurated today at the National Seed Foundation. It also employs propagators, laborers and laborers to must produce the Viscus rosacinensis Sincha A. Billiard. So another one is the St. Bridget College, also has a memorandum of agreement with the University of the Philippines of Spanos in order to mass propagate the uh, St. Bridget uh, hybrid. And of course, an ongoing memorandum of agreement with the Santa Rosa City government to mass produce the Viscus rosacinensis RNP at CBS. Of course, the university is also producing and mass propagating these different hybrids at the National Seed Foundation, which is the marketing arm of the Institute of Plant Breeding for the different varieties of crops that were developed at IPB. And of course, after this has been produced by these nurseries, they are being distributed to the prospective growers and users and landscapers that makes up a difference with the lives of these nurseries. <clears throat> Hibiscus is normally a one-day-old flower and usually in the afternoon it's closed. However, the breeding program is now on the process of developing and we had a few of this a two-day-old hibiscus. So it, would, it will stay two days for the plant. And the idea for this is to develop hibiscus into a cut flower. Actually, we have, we have sourced already some germ blossom that will last three to four days. And this will be crossed with a two-day-old bloom hibiscus. And if the breeding behavior is additive in nature, we could produce five to four-day-old, four to five-day-old hibiscus in the near future. And some of these two-day-old hibiscus are the following. It's a cross between Lauren Ligarda and Tahitian Dragon. So Tahitian Dragon is actually a big flower variety to produce the bright orange with dark red eye 
and pink is rays that radiate to the petals. So that's the close-up of the hybrid, which is a two-day-old. Another one is a cross of accession 18 in our gem plaza, cross with Dolores Ramirez, to produce the salmon petals with pastel yellow and okay? So that's the close-up of the hybrid. Another one is a Nairon Rose variety, which is a cross between the pink Nazaria and the orange Dorian Vigarda. It's a Nairon Rose with dark red eye. That's a close-up of the hybrid. And of course, we have a cross between No Line and Helia Castillo to produce a light orange with magenta eye. The close-up of the hybrid. And a cross between Dorian Vigarda and Mega Star to produce orange with yellow edging and red eye. And of course, the last one is Dorian Vigarda by Estrella Alabastro. It's also a pinkish white hybrid with white eye. Those are all two day old varieties. To complete and compile all the series into one application, the National Academy of Science and Technology sponsored a book that we wrote, and it is entitled Hibiscus Rosicinensis, Hibiscus Hybrids, and Filament Women Achievers, authored by myself and Mr. Reynold Pimentel. The book is edited by National Scientist Dolores Ramirez and Ms. Brinel Pamatpak. So this book describes all the different hybrids and have pictures of those hybrids. I think that's all. But before I end up, let me acknowledge the following. Our funding sources, the Las Vegas City Government, uh, the former Chancellor Luis Rey I. Velasco, who supported uh, the Hibiscus Breeding Program, the National Academy of Science and Technology. We have National Scientist Dolores Ramirez, Academician Emil Q. Javier, Academician Ruben L. Villarreal, Dean Angeles, Director Hernandez, Mr. Aurique, and the Gumamela breeding staff who are present today. They are all in green. Could you please stand up to recognize? And also Sophie and Jamie. These are the people who are behind me in the program. Thank you very much for listening and good afternoon. Thank you very much, Dr. Margarita. At this point, I would like to invite our audience to use the microphones around the room for your questions or comments regarding Dr. Magdalena's presentation. While we are thinking, I would like to inform you that the video presentation of Dr. Magdalena's presentation will be uploaded later this week at the Circa ADSS website, as well as a PDF copy of his PowerPoint presentation. Any questions or comments from our audience? Now is your chance. Yes, sir? Days. And second, the stigma should be receptive first before you start putting in the pollen. And to test that is to feel a little bit the stigma. If the stigma is a bit sticky, means to say it is ready to accept the pollen. Second is to look at the behavior of the pollen. The pollen at the time of pollination 
should be already powdery. That means to say, it should be similar to your talc, no? Sa pulpo nyo. That when it is like that and ready to scatter, that's the time the pollen should be used. And third, never pollinate on a dewy day. It will not set fruit. And of course, I agree with you, there are so many incompatibility in hibiscus and the thing is to try every variety which one is compatible with the other parent. Can you keep the pollen? Can you feed the pollen? Because sometimes the, the flower is not simultaneous, so if you want to cross between two species that you like and, and they don't have flower simultaneously, can you feed the pollen? Theoretically, pollen storage can be done in any kind of crop, okay? However, for hibiscus, in our breeding work, we usually prepare the pressed pollen. The reason for that is that when you use pollen that are stored, you still have to test it for viability before using it. But if you use pressed pollen, naturally you will have a big confidence that the pollen will Germany, but yes, pollen that are stored could be used. Yes, yes Dr. Reza. Uh, I have a friend from Yubidiriman, his name is Dr. Mark Sarko. I don't know if you know him. He collects uh, different uh, varieties of uh, hibiscus. But at the rate you are producing uh, different uh, uh, colors and forms of uh, uh, this plant. I, I think he will run out of space in this garden for all the hybrids that you are producing. But anyhow, my, my question is, has to do with, uh, I like the other programs in IPB where you breed different plants, vegetables, for example, for the benefit of farmers. I, I don't uh, see how your program benefits uh, it benefits the breeders, but I don't know how you intend to make small farmers benefit from the hibiscus uh, breeding program. Uh, what is your program so that uh, the small farmer can also benefit from your program? So the, the mechanism at the moment, uh, the way the breeding products are multiplied is that the nursery are having a franchise with the university and that is a policy of the UPLP administration to have it first franchised and afterwards it is distributed or sold to small growers and then the small growers are also producing it on their own for sale in their own nurseries so direct selling to small uh, nurseries at the moment is not passed, is not being done. Actually, it is to be still approved by the University of the Philippines officials. But small growers, backyard juicers, farmers can buy directly from the National Seed Foundation, which is also selling other varieties developed at IPB for the seed propagated crops corn, uh, peanut, soybeans, etc. So that's the mechanism by which these varieties could reach directly the small farmers is through the National Seed Foundation. And of course, Dr. Mark Sarko is an avid fan of the Pumamela. He comes to me from time to time to acquire the new hybrids. Of course, Dr. Lopesha. Uh, thank you, Doctor, for that very interesting uh, well, from my personal experience, two defects, two of my defects were healed by uh, the flower of my discourse. Now, my question is, is it possible that combining with beautiful, with beauty, increasing the flower for beauty and uh, uh, value, is it possible that you increase also the ability to cure more defects in the body because medicine now is is very is very costly so probably if you 
plant hibiscus with uh, the hybrids, you increase the medicinal uh, uh, effect. Probably, it, it will. This project will hurt so much the people in the Philippines. Okay, that's a very interesting comment, form of question. Because actually, uh, just last week, we were at the Department of Agriculture in the set of the Department of Agriculture Bureau of Agricultural Research because their section on health and wellness has commissioned us as a project on de developing hibiscus for health and wellness. And this, the, pro the way it will be sorted out is to cross our hibiscus, rhosocinensis, which is an ornamental, as we see, with hibiscus sapradipa or rosel, another species, to do an interspecific hybrid because uh, Rosel or Rubisco Sabradipa is a potent source of antioxidant for the body. And at present, there are already initiatives in developing Rubisco Sabradipa to be used as a health drink and also to be used in making soup. 